Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have the pleasure to talk to you today shortly about breeding of oil seed rape and pulses for feed and food. Uh, I apologize for not being able to be physically with you. A little bit of background. Norddeutsche Pflanzenzucht, in short, NPZ, is a family-owned breeding company with a long breeding history since 1892. Today, we are a leading company in breeding of winter and spring oilseed rape worldwide and in pulses, combining peas and faba beans. In rapeseed, we are producing certified seed of our varieties in close cooperation with DSV Lipstadt in the Rapul ring. And NPZ today has 240 co-workers on two breeding stations, including a significant breeding research unit in-house. Myself, I am heading the breeding of spring oilseed rape and pulses in our worldwide activities. There were two major challenges in rapeseed breeding. First was the food use. As you know, rapeseed has more than 40% oil and in the old plus plus types we had more than 50 percent of erucic acid and the goal was to simply eliminate that uh, and replace it by mainly by oleic acid and the second challenge was the residual rapeseed extraction meal of the old types had high levels of glucosinolates which limited the use in the feed use and the goal there was to lower the glucosinolates as much as possible, um, but at minimum below 18%, 18 micromoles of glucosinolate per seed. Here are some milestones in order to reach that goal. So 1897, Hans Lemke started a systematic breeding in winter rapeseed. Uh, in 1960, in Canada, there were found erucic acid-free mutants in the sub-spring variety Liho. In 1966, the Göttinger Arbeitskreis Qualitätsraps was founded to bring together researchers and breeders. In 1969, there were also discovered of double low mutants, in, mainly in the variety Bronowski, also a spring type. Uh, in Canada, these double low qualities were established as canola and still known today for that quality. In Europe, the first winter rape seed variety, Lysira, with, with a plus zero quality, was released in 1973. What do we have today? We have a rusic free ape rape seed oil, is considered one of the best vegetable oils from the nutritional perspective for the humans, and it is also ideal for biodiesel protection. To continue this story, in 1978, the first winter rapeseed Ledos with double zero quality was released and since 1986 there's a total conversion of the German production with double low winter varieties starting with Ceres and many many other varieties. The threshold today is in winter rapeseed below 18 micromoles glucosinolate per gram seed this is in Canada even lower. It is below 12 micromole glucosinolate content per gram of seed for the canola quality. Uh, today, it is without doubt that the residual meal or the residual cake after the oil extraction has a high value protein quality and is a very uh, high valued ingredient in diets for ruminants, pigs, and poultry. In order to breed for this double low quality in rapeseed, uh, breeders needed um, a method to be able to screen lots of material for the wanted quality. And this was established uh, by introducing the NIRS, Near Infrared Reflection Spectroscopy, now since more than 25 years. Meanwhile, or since a long time, all breeders have this in-house, and by this we can determine glucosinolate content, oil content, fatty acid profile, protein content, and fiber content, 
on the whole seat. That means without destroying the seat, so we can use the desired seeds for further breeding. This table summarizes the main features of rapeseed extraction meal and it, today rapeseed extraction meal has become one very important protein source for, in many diets for feeding animals. This overview highlights the actual status of rapeseed grown area in the world and with the exception of India, all other main growing areas are growing double low quality rapeseed. So those are the fruits of the very consequent breeding for food and feed characters in rapeseed. To summarize the case of oilseed rape, uh, we are looking back on a worldwide success story which was fueled by breeding for food and also for feed. The necessary ingredients for this were long-term strategies of all stakeholders which were involved like breeders, oil millers, animal nutritionists and farmers. It was necessary to detect mutants in the desired character in worldwide collections. Here plant breeding really was the key and we needed effective methods to score large amounts of genetics for fatty acids and glucosinolates. Uh, having taken an outlook, where does it, what, what is the future of this? The rapeseed protein so far mainly was used as a feed ingredient and is also well suited for human consumption. And in the short to midterm, there uh, will be uh, a competition also between the feed and the food use of this highly valuable rapeseed protein. So let's continue with the other crops that I am talking about. Um, we are talking about pulses which are grown in the EU, uh, namely a combining peas, faba beans and lupins. The past was long and discouraging in the way that the trend for the cultivation was negative since 1980s. In UK, it was a little bit different. The critical mass of produce which became available for feedstuff companies became lower and lower uh, and thus homegrown pulses were only paid low prices. They were mainly driven by cheap and abundant imports of soybeans and not reflecting the true feeding value. And this was the main obstacle for any development and still is today. Food markets were only marginally existing and the breeding was consequently more and more reduced. So there was not really big advances in agronomy, for example. Here's just a picture which shows you that the, the nearer past was a little bit more positive since 2013. If you look at the faba bean acreages in the EU, we had a near a doubling with a kind of um, stabilizing on a relatively good level meanwhile. And the same as uh, for field peels, we can state that in the last years we had a constant evolution in the in the acreages with a peak in 17. 20 is a little bit lower, but we know from 21 already we have a significant increase again. So this is also encouraging for a breeder to breed varieties for this market. If I look to the future of these crops, uh, there is some encouraging uh, facts to state. Uh, the pulses have become more interesting in recently due to urgent need to extend crop rotations. They have a very low carbon dioxide footprint because they are fixing their nitrogen themselves due to the symbiosis with bacteria. They have high ecological benefits. That means nourishing pollinating insects and they are contributing to a larger diversity on the, on the fields. 
the trend to locally produce food and also to vegetarian vegan food uh, is clearly on the road food markets are evolving interest increasing interest in protein from peas fava beans and lupins as alternatives to soybean especially soybean coming from from abroad uh, and this def finally also lead, leads to a higher added value for these crops in the local markets. It is no longer only the cheap, undervalued and underpaid protein source. And there is positive trends which also are fueling the breeding activities for these crops. So it is a still, hopefully it is a success story, success story still to unfold. There seems to be uh, the added value, but mainly in the food sector, the competition for raw material will be in disfavor of the feed sector. As a consequence of still limited production in the EU, the quantity will be most likely move into the food sector. Breeding goals so far between food and feed use are not contradictorily, um, but still we need significant breeding inputs to stabilize and expand the acreages. Soybeans are evolving as a serious pulse crop for many EU areas as well, but uh, explicitly produced soybeans in the EU and not imported from South America or North America. This in a nutshell was a breeder's view on two very diverse crop groups. Uh, and I thank you very much for your attention.